Welcome to the church services at Holy Spirit Parish. Today's Mass intention is for Preston Pettit. Please rise and join in our opening song, number 550, Sing a New Song. let us worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We gather to worship as one family. Let us acknowledge our sinfulness before God and before one another and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess unto Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have consistently in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask you as a savior of your religion, all of you hymns and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, 
at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the le second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good and all the time, and that is his nature. Friends, today the theme of our reflection is the transcendent dimension. The transcendent dimension. In the gospel, ten lepers beg Jesus for mercy. In obedience to the instructions of Jesus, they turn to go show themselves to the priest, an action required of those who have already been healed. Now on their way, they receive miraculous healing. Then one of them, a Samaritan, the one who was considered among the minority, who was hated in his own society, sees that, no, this healing goes beyond physical healing. He sees the transcendent dimension of it. So he now runs back to Jesus, praising God hysterically and thanking Jesus. Jesus confirms the transcendent dimension of the whole experience by affirming the gratitude of this Samaritan to God and also pointing to that transcendent gift within this Samaritan, the gift of faith, by which he was healed not only physically, but receiving the transcendent gift of eternal salvation. Similarly, in the first reading, a foreigner by name Naaman goes to the prophet Elisha, and at the instruction of the prophet, he goes to dip himself in the Jordan River, and he receives healing. He also sees a transcendent dimension to this healing experience. So he and his people come back to Elisha, and he acclaims, now I know that in all the world there is no God except the God of Israel. In his praise to God, he would want to offer a gift to Elisha, but Elisha would not take the gift not because he did not need that thanksgiving gift, but because Elisha would not want to take credit for what God has done. He would acknowledge the transcendent dimension. Now, in acknowledgement of this transcendent experience that he has had, Naaman will pick some soil from the land of Israel and return to his own country so that 
by that he would recognize the continuous and perpetual presence of God in his life and therefore perpetually commit himself to worship God forever. In the second reading, Paul and Timothy see Jesus as the perfect model of ministry. Jesus, who was human as themselves, who had a human ancestry because David was his ancestor, suffered and died. But now he lives in his transcendence as the risen one, and he offers salvation to everyone. Because of Jesus, Paul and Timothy and every Christian have hoped to persevere in spreading the message of the kingdom of God, in suffering for the sake of salvation. Beloved, do you see the transcendent dimension of your life and of things that happen in life? Yes, our bodies, our flesh are made of earth, but we are created in the image and likeness of God. Because of this, the transcendent dimension of our life is very important if we are to attain our life's goal, that is, happiness and fulfillment. But the challenge is that because of human nature, we tend to fall for fame, for easy life, for reward here and now, or for result here and now. And sometimes it becomes difficult to acknowledge or to recognize the transcendent dimension of our lives. But thanks be to God. The good news is that we have Jesus who points us beyond our limited horizon. Jesus gives us the gift of faith by which we see God's saving power at work where others would not see it. You may be sick. You may be confined. You may be weak because of old age. You may not be able to do the things that you used to do or you would wish to do. But that does not mean that God's hand is no longer with you. If you have faith, you would recognize the transcendent dimension of your own state of life, and you will give thanks to God. You may have lost your job, and you do not know what to do. If you have faith, you would see the transcendent dimension of that state in which you are. You give thanks to God, and that faith will direct you. If we do not pay attention to the transcendent dimension of life, and we lean solely on the corporeal dimension, the danger is that we will be tempted to stop being the good person that we are. You will be tempted to stop believing. You will be tempted to be ungrateful. You will be tempted to stop doing the good things that we do. But if we have faith, we will commit perpetually, to worship God, to thank him for the gifts we receive in life, and be ready to offer any sacrifice that we are able for the sake of the gift of salvation, not only for ourselves, but for those who may be around us and for those who may be looking up to us. Do you sometimes get hysterical for God? for the faith that you have, well, when someone is wondering why you are crazy about your faith, when someone sees meaninglessness about the life that you live for God, tell them it is because you see the transcendent dimension. If we see the transcendent dimension, you will never despair. You will not get distressed, and we will not get depressed because we will always recognize the saving power of God with us, and we will give thanks. God is good. Amen.
all the time. And that is his nature. Friends, our loving God has spoken to us in his love. We will respond in faith with the Nicene Creed as we pray. I believe in one God, the Father of the Lord. Friends, confident in the saving power of God, let us bring our needs and the needs of all people to God. That the church, reflecting on the heart of Christ, will go forth toward those who are in need of forgiveness, love, and the truth of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. For military leaders and heads of state, and for those who advise them in their duties, may they bring us to world peace, we pray to the Lord. For the poor and homeless, the sick and dying, those suffering financial strain, and those with difficult challenges, may God hear their prayers, we pray to the Lord. For favorable weather during harvest season, for protection from storms, and for those suffering from the aftermath of the hurricane, we pray to the Lord. For all, all our deceased brothers and sisters, especially Hub Bradley, for whom we offer this Mass, we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, place your personal intention before God. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son who lifts us beyond our limitations to see your saving power at work in our lives. Fill our hearts always with gratefulness that by our lives we may draw others to you through Christ our Lord. As we present our gifts to the Lord, please join in singing number 607, All My Days.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper has ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. 
may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My dear friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join in our communion song number 340, God's Holy Gifts.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's go forth singing number 444, Blessed Be the Lord. <laughs> 